it's me and welcome back to another video. So today, I cannot put it into words how excited I am to tell you that I have some really cool news. I have been working on this project in secret for months now and I haven't been able to tell you and today is finally the day that I can spill the beans, tell you what it's all about. But first, before I tell you, let's go and head over to Mickey because I feel like it will make a little bit more sense when I'm with him. So this little licky guy here has been in my life for almost 12 whole years now which is absolutely wild to think about. We've made so many memories together, we've been on so many awesome adventures, and Mickey has honestly been the best first pony. I've obviously been on YouTube for quite a few years now, however, um, you know, Mickey and I had so many adventures and things before that, so to celebrate, I wanted to do something big, and therefore, we've come out with a book called Mickey the Blue-Eyed Pony. Um, I did this in collaboration with an author called Janet Rising. She was really lovely. She came over and saw the horses and met them, and I um, had all the stories in my head, and she really helped me sort of get it onto paper, which is wild to think about because, you know, I have the book in my hand right now. I've been working on this for months. The amount of emails that have gone back and forth between me and Janet, going over all the different um, chapters, making sure that everything was correct and things. And you know, look at it now. It is a real book. How just, I'm just speechless. This is just, I cannot believe it. Um, so I'm actually also dyslexic, so she really helped me with that. I had to have extra time at school in my exams and things. Um, so I had to really work really hard at school, but I, I was really proud with my grades that I got at the end when I finished. But anyway, onto the book. So um, I actually really enjoy reading now in my pastime. It's a really good way for me to get away from the screens, especially with my job. It involves, you know, being at a computer quite a lot. But anyway, I thought, making a book all about the awesome adventures Mickey and I had together and even like about the lone ponies that I had before him how Mickey came into my life and also like my time at Pony Club I thought would be a really lovely thing to share with you guys because I came from a completely non-equestrian background my parents knew nothing about horses before I got into riding and I wanted to share some of those memories with you so I thought I'd sit down have a bit of a read and go through some of my favorite parts. So past Esme would be absolutely terrified at the prospect of reading a book in front of people if that was you know a school project having to read in front of the class or if it was sort of um, in group reading where one person would have to read at a time that used to absolutely terrify me so to say that it's now my job and I'm doing it in front of hundreds of thousands of people is kind of wild so hopefully my reading has improved since then I do read like a whole book a week so uh, hopefully that has improved over time but anyway the book does actually start off before I got Mickey with one of my um, lone ponies Lola so I thought I'd start off at chapter one and have a little bit of a read. So also it is in, um, it's not in first person. So I'm going to be referring to myself as Esme, which might seem a little bit strange, but there we go. Esme sat in the field shelter and pushed her fingers in her ears, unable to believe what was happening. She had been promised it would all be over by the time she got back from school. But when her mother had turned the car into the drive, there was a trailer at the end of the field and Esme could see someone leading a pony, her pony, towards the ramp. Dropping her school bag onto the drive and ignoring her mother's anxious cries, Esme had fled to the donkey's field, climbing through the fence and hurdling herself down onto the straw inside the field shelter. When she had laid the donkey's bed in there that morning, she had no idea she would be the one sitting in it, seeking refuge this afternoon. She could feel tears burning behind her eyes and could hear her mother calling out her name before the sounds were all shut out by her fingers. She had hunched down on the straw and sobbed, waiting for the car and the trailer to go. The car and the trailer that were taking her pony away from her forever. 
So this is an extract from when I came home from school and I thought when I came home that Lola would be gone, my lone pony, but um, it was really sad because I had to watch her being taken away, led into that trailer and I thought, you know, I'd finally got my first lone pony. I thought everything would be running smoothly, you know, all of my dreams had come true and it was honestly like my first heartbreak to have, you know, a lone pony taken away from you. I know that in the end it was for the best, but Right then, I went through so many emotions and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Um, but yeah, lo losing a pony, even if it's not yours, it really, it really sucks. So this next extract is a little bit more upbeat. Obviously, I'm not going to put too many spoilers in this for you guys. Um, but this was when Mickey and I first met. We've been looking for a pony of my own for so long because I had so many troubles with lone ponies and things. So let's start off. As they walked into the yard, several equine heads looked out over their half doors and stared at them with interest. I wonder which pony we've come to see, thought Esme, not wanting to guess in case she was disappointed. After necessary instructions, the woman who owned the pony led them into the stable in the corner of the yard. Esme held her breath. In the next few moments, she would meet the pony that might be hers. Here he is, the woman said, opening the stable door. Meet Mickey. Two blue eyes looked over at the visitors, a cream mane topped with a cream neck which ran to a cream body and cream legs. Mickey thrust his pink muzzle towards them in a friendly way and Esme let out a breath as she hadn't realised she'd been holding it in. Oh, he's gorgeous. I love his blue eyes, she exclaimed. She had always liked Bradley's blue eye and for the fact that Mickey's eyes were both blue, just endeared him to her even more. The pony took a step towards Esme and gave her a gentle push with his muzzle. It was as though Mickey was eyeing Esme up as his prospective new owner as much as she was appraising him as her new pony. At 13 hands, Mickey was much taller than Lola by 10 centimetres, but Esme was easily legged up onto his saddle where she felt very high up. If Mickey did become her own pony, she hoped he would stand quietly for her to mount him from a few steps because she didn't think she'd be able to mount him from the ground. She had to shorten the length of Mickey's current owner's stirrups quite a lot. Clearly, Mickey had been outgrown, but would that prove to be lucky for Esme? When I first met Mickey, um, I was going through so many different emotions. I was so excited, but also so nervous because I didn't want it you know, to be too good to be true. Um, I absolutely fell in love with him when I first met him. It was kind of love at first sight. He popped his little head over the stable door and seeing those two blue eyes, because um, actually one of my previous lone ponies that I do talk in the book about um, earlier on, uh, he had a blue eye too. So it was kind of felt like fate when I met Mickey. Um, also something that I was kind of worried about as well was you know what was going to be the future for Mickey obviously his previous owners um, had outgrown him and I was like oh my goodness in a few years time that could be me outgrowing him and I was also kind of nervous about that because of the previous lone ponies being taken away from me I really didn't want to go through that heartbreak again um, so I yeah there was a lot going on on that day and honestly looking back at it now it seems like a whole age ago and you know I'm so grateful that I met this guy because he's probably falling asleep right now because my reading is probably quite boring for him, but I'm so lucky to say that he's been in my life. So the next extract actually takes me to my first ever pony club with Mickey. Hopefully my reading is getting a little bit better now doing it out loud, getting into the swing of things. I haven't read out loud in ages since back when I was at school. So um, yeah, hopefully it's getting better for you guys, but anyway. Esme felt her heart thumping in her chest. She hadn't imagined Pony Club Camp would be anything like this. It's more like boot camp. Still, she thought Mr. Harrington wasn't horrible to the ponies. At least that was something. He was bound to like Mickey. Mickey was such a fabulous pony. But when Mr. Harrington walked around Mickey, it was obvious by his expressions that he thought Mickey was anything but fabulous. What an odd coloured pony, he said in a rather loud voice. Esme felt enraged on Mickey's behalf. She opened her mouth to explain that her pony's rare double dilute cromello colourings, but was shortly cut by Mr. Harrington's next remark. And he looks as though he's half asleep. You need to wake your pony up. Miss, we can't have a half asleep pony at Pony Club camp. Esme shut her mouth in shock. How rude. 
So starting Pony Club was a really big step for me because a lot of people had already had friends for a long time and I kind of started off being the new kid and I go through my experience of making friends and some that are really lifelong that I'm still friends with now which I'm really lucky to say. Um, I had so much fun at Pony Club and I go through um, you know all the fun things I did but also some of the scarier things that I did as well and um, some problems and things and challenges that I had to overcome and um, obviously Mickey was fabulous through all of it whatever Mr Harrington wanted to say about him um, I also you know I felt like a lot of time at Pony Club I kind of had to prove myself I was the girl that had the non-equestrian parents I was the girl that had the um, beautiful in my eyes pony others might call him unusual um, and also you know it was just all very new especially starting off in a new pony club not really knowing anybody and I kind of go through my experience with that how I made friends and things like that as well um, so I don't know if we're going to finish it here because I don't want to make too many spoilers you know I've really enjoyed reading this to you guys and I really hope you enjoy reading it as much as I did creating it um, along with Janet as well um, so I think I'm going to finish off today video here if you do want to check it out I'll leave some links in the description below I would really really appreciate that because I have put my heart and soul into this book poor Janet had me crying while I was telling her like my writing story so apologies Janet for that you know I yeah so much has gone into this book blood not blood but definitely some sweat and tears and um, you know it just it brought up so many emotions because obviously Mickey has been in my life longer than I, you know he has without me and you know I just love him so much and now I can look back at and read this of all our incredible memories. <laughs> I am so soppy. I am so soppy aren't I?